Now we just saw that paramagnetic materials are those in which the 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 field that is developed inside the material that is that is supportive of the external field. So I have the first thing that that is there is that I have I have I have my chi as small but positive. So what happens to mu r? Mu r is greater than 1. Okay, so mu r is greater than 1. Now what happens due to that? Due to that the field inside becomes more more right yeah so so and, and what should be the cause of it what should be the cause of it no then what happens say say i have a material and it has got its own own magnetic moments fine so it has its own magnetic moments <coughs> Okay. Fine. It has its own magnetic moments. Now what happens? The effect of diamagnetism still persists. Correct? <coughs> and in the absence of any magnetic field, they'll have due to the thermal motion, they'll have a net field of they'll have a net magnetic moment of of zero. Okay, now what happens, the moment you, you apply an external field, what happens, these, these, these uh, magnetic moments, they have a tendency to turn in the field, they get turned in the field, okay. So, so the magnetic moments, The magnetic moments of different atoms, the magnetic moments of different atoms are present even in the absence of field, even in the absence of field but the net magnetic moment is zero because of random thermal motion. So what happens? The moment you apply a magnetic field in presence of a magnetic field, in presence of a magnetic field, these magnetic moments have a tendency to the magnetic moments due to the atoms turns and aligns in the direction of the magnetic field. Fine. So what happens? Earlier it was something like this. After some time, after some time you will see them. See, 
why I have shown, why I have shown it uh, zigzag because it may be that some of them have not aligned, right? Some of them have not aligned, but the net effect is that there will be a field in the same direction as the magnetic field. So this was before, this was before, this is after. Not necessarily, not necessarily. <coughs> It depends on their internal internal resistance that the matrix that the matrix is putting on them, right? If all of them start aligning, then it becomes ferromagnetic. Fine. But the very fact that some of them align, it means that for the rest there is some resistance in in maybe turning it along, right? If it was everything, all all of them, then it would have become. Then it would have become. Become a ferromagnetic substance. Okay, and and the. And, example is. So some of the materials which follow this are, aluminum. Sodium, calcium, oxygen, oxygen only at STP. Okay. What else? Copper chloride. So right now, if you bring the magnet here, hmm. oxygen matters will align the hmm, hmm. But you'll not be able to see it because because they are randomly moving. So, but if you do it in a container and then you check it. Okay, then, then then and apart from that, it also has nitrogen, which is diamagnetic. So so there is a trouble. So it has to be pure oxygen. It has to be within within a container. Then you'll be able to understand. And and the density should be high. That means at a high pressure. Then you'll realize it more. Now. Now you'll appreciate this fact that magnetization. Why, why is a paramagnetic material being uh, having having the having a net magnetic field due to magnetization that means it has now net magnetic moment per unit volume and you will realize it that this magnetization magnetization m is directly proportional to b naught that means stronger the field you put it in more and more of the magnetic moments will start aligning and you'll also appreciate that <coughs> magnetic moment is inversely proportional to the temperature why because temperature is that that randomizing influence if you increase the temperature the vibrations start becoming more and the tendency to alignment will go down. What do you mean by random thermal motion? Thermal motion is even 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 from here, even from from the ambient temperature, the material keeps on taking heat energy and that induces this thermal motion. That happens with conductors, electrons of the conductors as well. Okay. So so M is directly proportional to B naught. So so obviously m is directly proportional to b naught upon t m is directly proportional to b naught upon t and when the proportionality goes i have a constant c which is called curie's constant curie's constant i do not remember the value okay now how is m related to h how is M related to H? We had seen M is M is M is directly proportional to to H. And when when that whole thing went away, M is directly so M was equal to what? M was equal to chi. M is chi h, right? We know that 
m is directly proportional to h so susceptibility thing came in right so chi h so here it is chi h that is equal to mu not h is it not Huh? Inst sure, sure, sure. Yes. So, so I am replacing that value here. Chi h is equal to c into mu naught h upon <coughs> t. Is it not? So, what does it become? It becomes. It becomes a relation between chi and chi and t. We understand that. Okay. We understand that. Fine. So we see that chi chi is dependent on on the on the temperature and and this depends on the material, right? So so Curie's constant depends on the material. So chi and mu depend on temperature and the material. Therefore. I I write it here. Temperature will have a chi constant value. Mu depend no depend on for every material. No no wait I am telling you. No why why you are not uh, you are not bound to keep it that way. No obviously not. Why chi uh, and mu not and c u c are fixed for the material. Huh right. No, mu not mu not is universal constant. Four C. Four pi into ten is two power seven. Hmm. Four pi into ten hmm. is hmm. power seven. That's mu not. Okay, hmm. That is given. Hmm. Chi is fixed for the material. Hmm. And C is also uh, hmm. dependent on the material. Hmm. So all three are constant. That the value of temperature will also be constant for that material. No, no. This is your independent variable. Try to understand. The value of chi keeps on changing. Chi, chi is not a constant. It is dependent on. Uh, that's what I'm writing. Chi and mu depend on the temperature and the material and the material. Temperature. For every material, huh? E will be some value, right? See, you can you can you can decide to heat the material or you can decide to cool the material. According to that, chi will change. Huh, yeah. Chi will change. Whatever value, see, the values in the book that you might be given, you, you just check the book, they will be giving at some temperature. They are bound to give that. Otherwise, uh, this, at 300K, you see, table 5.2. They are telling you at 500K, otherwise it will change. That's why they are particular about the temperature. Now what happens if you start lowering the temperature, a point comes in where all the dipoles, they are perfectly aligned and the and, and it reaches a saturation value of magnetization. What do we mean by saturation value of magnetization? Saturation value of magnetization, that means it changes no more from there. Okay. So, so. So as we start, uh, maybe the fifth point I write here, as we start reducing the temperature, as we start reducing the temperature, the temperature, the 
value of magnetization reaches a a saturation value you understand what saturation means a saturation value no saturated solutions that it changes no more okay so so what happens you start reducing the temperature so so you understand what happens so maybe magnetization changes like that and at some temperature it becomes like that constant now okay so so reaches the saturation value m not say okay m not they have used the same nomenclature or something else the book it reaches a a, a saturation value hmm? ms they call it ms so so ms now below this okay this this is curie's constant this is curie's law also keep that in mind this is this is your curie's law okay so what happens this ms now if you reduce the temperature there are no more dipoles left to align themselves so what happens what happens the the magnetization changes no more so after that below that below that temperature this fails <coughs> ms as all the dipoles as all the dipoles get aligned with the field below this temperature the the curie's law fails correct so you have to be above that temperature for the law to to hold fine 